Alyssa Young, take one. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Lens. Today I am joined by the very talented Alyssa Young, all the way in Sacramento. Thank you so much, Alyssa. She's an amazing freelance videographer, video editor, social media presence, TikTok, everything. Um, so we're super excited to chat with her today. I'm sure we'll learn a lot. Um, but Alyssa, thank you so much for joining me. And you were speaking a little bit before this, but yeah, I like, I've been following you on TikTok for a minute now, and I just love just how informative and educational your content is, and you're showing all the behind the scenes so that people can learn from you. Um, so, so thank you so much for, for taking the time today. All right, let's dive right into it. How did you kind of get into this creative field? How'd you get into the arts? Um, was it kind of just something that was a core piece of your upbringing or was it a little or something that kind of developed um, you know as, as you grew up basically it all started back in high school um, I was a freshman this is back in like 2012 and I was honestly just looking for electives to take at my school um, just trying out some fun random things that I have never like gone into before and I saw that my school offered like a broadcasting program and I was like what is that like I just saw like in the description just like filming editing i was like that sounds cool like i honestly didn't know much about it so i was like let's just sign up and try it out and if it doesn't work out then i'll take a different class next time um i joined the broadcasting class and i'm literally like one like it's literally the first class period and like right when it ends i was like oh yeah this is what i'm doing forever like it was weird how i like knew like right then <laughs> like i was like this is it like this is amazing i found like basically something i actually enjoyed doing so yeah, I did um, broadcasting at my high school all four years um, and basically like towards the end of my senior year, I got to be like an editor and like be more hands on with like the program and just like leading the class and getting more of like a leadership role. And then that's where I was like, OK, like now I know I can take this like to another level if I like stick with it and just keep working on everything. So um, did broadcast all four years. I graduated and that's when like I figured out okay how am I going to continue this as like my career because I was going because then I had to go to college and I picked communications as my major and I didn't do anything like film or media related type of thing but I just kept up my skills like on my own and just like I loved doing it every single day like working on it wasn't like a job for me or anything like hard to do so I just loved creating every single day so yeah definitely it started from broadcasting and then just like picking it up as a hobby and just doing it every day yeah was there any point where when you were deciding to go to college like film school like versus just a more traditional degree was that ever did that ever cross your mind or was that something you kind of debated um, when you were choosing definitely I debated on it a lot and the big thing was my plan I wanted to be in LA for college at first and then um just like financially and just like me personally, like I wasn't ready to make the big move yet. And when I was picking my major, like I knew I was gonna go to Sac State. Like I finally decided on that. I commuted all four years and they had a film program and I went back and forth like, do I do film? Do I stick with like communications where it's more broad and I can maybe like branch out to do, to do different things? Like, I don't know. And um, I don't know, I just didn't really fall in love with like the classes that Sac State had to offer for film. So. I just said, hey, I can do this all on my own, um, learn on YouTube, just practice every single day, and then also go to school and just kind of kind of get like a more broad like education with communi communication. So yeah, it was definitely a big decision to make, but I'm glad th like how it all planned out because it ended up working out, so. Right, of course, and something that I find interesting is like, so you live in Sacramento, you were born and raised in Sacramento, and I think, especially nowadays with like TikTok, Instagram, whatever, like social media makes it seem that like you have to be in LA or New York or like one of these big cities in order to be a creative. And like, if you live anywhere else, you basically cannot be a creative. And uh, hopefully, hopefully I'm not spoiling any spoilers, but I know you mentioned that you're moving to LA here in the next couple of months. So you are making that transition. But I do want to just speak on the fact that you were able to gain the success and develop a career uh, while living in Sacramento. So for anyone that's watching, starting out, who might not live in the biggest city, you know, what, what is some advice of how to take advantage of wherever you live? Yeah, I mean, just like literally networking as much as you can, like that's such a big thing. And like, at first I didn't want to network and like try to find gigs. Like I just thought that was the scariest thing. I was like, please, no, I don't want to do that. But now with social media, just like comparing it to like now to when like I was starting to go into college like yeah we had social media but like 
we weren't using our Instagrams to like try and get jobs. Like it was more of just like a fun hobby you post on Instagram. But like now, like a majority of the time I'm getting jobs through people finding me on Instagram, me reaching out on Instagram or any other social media platforms like LinkedIn, applying to jobs and stuff. But yeah, that's a big thing. I always thought I needed to be in LA to like do what I love to do. But as it's honestly about who you know kind of and just like putting yourself out there, posting as much as you can. And eventually like in Sacramento, since it is like more of like, it's not necessarily a small town, but everyone kind of knows each other. So once you're kind of like have an in with someone, they connect you with someone else and someone else and you just start building more connections. So that's like another big thing is just like, it's networking is what it comes down to. A hundred percent, yeah. And I, and I love that like a lot of it is just, yeah, putting yourself out there. Like you said, you know, I think no matter, mm -hmm. I think every creative videographer, photographer kind of goes through that like imposter syndrome situation where it's like, ah, like yeah. I feel like I'm not good enough or you compare yourself to other videographers, but Regardless, yeah. everyone has to start somewhere. Um, and I think you should just not be afraid to put your work out there, right? Like I think um, sometimes Definitely. sometimes videos that you might not think are good, someone at a random company might see it and it's like, whoa, yeah. like I need that exact thing done for us and it'll land you an opportunity. So right. um, that's something I like to stress, you know, just for anyone watching, um, just to put yourself out there because you never know what's going to happen. But um, I want to take a couple steps back and, and learn about like your first time holding a camera like what was that like what you know what was there a moment where it was like oh man like I, I love this or was it just like oh this is like kind of difficult and I don't really know what I'm doing so what was that like whole just how you learned all your technical skills we've actually been like recently going through like um our home videos like VHS like cassette tapes and we've been like trying to develop them and like watching them back and honestly I just remember like me and my sister like I would take my VHS camera that I had and I was filming I was doing like a vlog with my like VHS camera before no vlogging way. was a thing when I was little like I filming think. my sister like running around with our big huge camera and I was doing that a lot so like growing up like having that camera definitely like sparked my interest and my love for just like filming and stuff even though it wasn't it was just for fun and then when I finally got to high school and we got to use they had like I don't remember what the brand was or anything but it was just like little digital camcorders that we used at first and honestly I like picked it up pretty easily I was like okay like I kind of have like an eye for it because there it is a thing you need to kind of have like some people have it some people don't just an eye for like the creativity and just like I don't know, making a good shot, I guess. So I don't know, I picked it up pretty quickly. And and then from there, like I was just filming with, we had Canons at school. I got my first camera uh, my senior year of high school. It was like a graduation present. And then um, from there, like I just film like every single day, like even on my phone, even just like filming anything to get like practice and repetition. After you graduated from college, what were some of those initial steps of, of making content creation or just video video editing a career? Like, what, did you have a strategy where it's like, you know, I'm gonna put myself in this situation in order to hopefully land me a bigger opportunity or just walk us through that, that sort of your mentality um, after graduating college? When I was finishing up my senior year, this was at this time last year, the pandemic hit and I was taking like 19 units all online all of a sudden so like I kind of I was doing freelance at the time and as well as working as an audiovisual technician for the Sacramento Kings so the basketball season got put on hold so I didn't have a job there anymore basically and then uh, my freelance gigs were somewhat still happening but I kind of had to put it off just so I could finish school like I had I had only a couple more months left just had to grind it out and just get it over with and then I don't know I mean I guess I just got really lucky with how the pandemic turned out with my freelance gigs because I turned it into like getting gigs all editing based honestly working every single day I was so excited to finally graduate and just be able to edit and try to film as much as I can but just working on your craft like every day and then posting that's when like my TikTok started to like kind of get going and I was starting to post more constant on there so um yeah just honestly working like every single day is like I mean, you don't have to do that because I know like the grind hustle culture is like a big debate and stuff. But for me, like I just knew I needed to like wanted to keep building my skills and just keep practicing. And I love it. Like if you don't love it, then it's like this isn't for you. So I don't know. It's just like it's fun for me. And I just like always love to 
get practice in. Yeah, and I love that. I think that's a great point. I think if, if you're doing it for the wrong reasons or you think you're going to be like, you just want to be Instagram famous and you think this is the route to do it, like it's, it's going to eat at your soul yeah. and you're going to hate right. it. So I think doing it with the right intentions is always very key. You mentioned that you were kind of freelancing and, and during, during all this time. So walk us through like how you were able to pick up some freelance clients um, while you were in college and what that balance was like, um, you know, doing your, your school work while, while still doing some, some freelance work on the side. I had got my first job ending of high school and that went into like my freshman year of college at a photography company and I worked as like, basically it started out with being a, it's called like a shoot coordinator, but that just meant like working the front desk type of thing. And then I finally worked my way up to being like a photographer. And then having that experience on my resume was like, good for me to um, finally get more maybe gigs as a videographer anything in the creative aspect so then that's when I started to apply for like more internships or and more jobs as just like a video editor in general um, sophomore year to the beginning of my junior year I had my internship with the Sacramento Kings and then once that was over I that's when I really picked up on freelance because I started I built like connections at the Kings and then I got my first official freelance gig with her name's Katarina Contouris and she is an MC for the Kings and like wanted to build her own YouTube channel so we kind of just like went on from there and I still work with her I just been I just did a shoot with her yesterday so um, basically my first freelance gig was with her uh, my sophomore year and then like here and there I had other gigs that like I would reach out to like people and um, try to find work here and there but Katarina was like my consistent like client basically throughout college for sure. Amazing. And I like how you just subtly dropped like, oh, yeah, I was with the Kings, you know, no big deal. <laughs> no. No, 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 I'm just teasing you. But yeah, I think um, <laughs> uh, I, I'd love to dive into just like that, that opportunity on its own. And just like for anyone, any videographers, people in high school watching this who want to maybe shoot for their favorite basketball team, NFL team, whatever. Um, what are some steps that you would recommend in order to, you know, a finding opportunities like that and b just uh, how to how to actually make sure you obtain those opportunities as a whole with that internship that took me almost a year to get um i honestly just like wanted to work in the golden one center had opened my freshman year of college and i just knew i was like i need to work in that building somehow like i didn't care what i did <laughs> i was like i'll work in food i'll work as like an usher like i just wanted to somehow work in the golden one center and um so i was just on their website and I, that it was complete luck fate I don't know but I stumbled across all of their internship openings and then I saw they had one um, it was called a content and development intern so that was all video production editing and everything um, and I just got lucky and I just applied got an interview somehow and I didn't get it the first time uh, it didn't work out he was like my school schedule was kind of crazy at that point with what they needed so he's like, come try again next time. Like, we really like what you have, what you offer and stuff. So come try again. So I didn't get another interview until um, almost a year later. And I finally landed the job after the second interview. And so like, just being patient and like, I wanted it that first initial time, but like, I, it somehow was not, it was not destined for me to happen, like have it that at that time. So just being patient and like during the time where I got the first interview to the second interview, I was working every single day trying to like build my skills. I was watching all of the content the Sacramento Kings were making, um, their video team and just like studying and just figuring out like the style of videos they like to make. So then by the time I had my second interview, I had more of like a good concept of what they were looking for and the style of videos they wanted to make. So then that made the getting the job and starting a little bit more easier i think then if i had gotten it back in december i think i would have been really lost and like confused and just like maybe not my skills weren't ready yet so just like you just have to keep working building your skills and eventually like something cool will happen and you can land like your dream job so it's so like underestimated just like the value of timing just like sometimes things aren't meant yeah. to be at that at that moment in time you know and i think again social exactly. media could be a big culprit of that just like like you mentioned earlier it's like that that grind culture where it's like everything needs to happen immediately or it seems like everyone's doing all this stuff but it's really like you know people have been working really hard for it and everything takes time um i know you brought some amazing examples from the king from your time at the kings that we'll get into in the second half of the of our chat but what what were some of like the, the uh your, your day-to-day -day type um you know roles and like uh, how any challenges that kind of presented itself or any cool cool moments that kind of just happened um, during your time with the with the Sacramento Kings. Day to day, 
it was totally different depending on if it was just a normal day in the office or if it was a game day. The game days were definitely more fun. <laughs> um, basically, like I was doing this during school too, so we could only work. Um, basically, it was kind of like part time at first for me, and then I got to get. Um, I had like a nine to five experience um, during the summertime, so then that's when I was working forty hours a week. Uh, but like a, a day to day, like for a game, I would go go to school commute like 10 minutes down to Golden One Center and at first you would kind of like I would like meet up with the editors and see what type of content they're trying to get for the game because every day they were making a new type of edit if that was a player highlight like focusing on a story of one player for the game if like maybe they were going to get like an award or like I don't know just like a cool anniversary or something so you just like I just had to listen to what the editors had to say and um go from them because like I didn't have any creative say because I am just an, I was just an intern so um yeah basically meeting up with the editors finding out what the game plan is for the day we would kind of like have a google doc going of like certain shots we needed to get for the game and kind of assigning roles um so then I would uh, there was like a kind of a boring thing you would do like if we had downtime and it was called logging which was like you basically input information for every single play of every single game, like what this player is wearing, what kind of shot they took, um, if they had a cool reaction. It's just like blog logging, and, and it's like it was really boring, but like whatever. I was an intern, had to do it, so I would take some downtime, get some logging done um, until it was finally ready for warm ups, and then we would go to warm ups. I would honestly like you, we didn't even need to get like a lot of content for warm ups, but. Um, we would just try to like take pictures. I was like trying to up my photo game or just like finding cool techniques and shots to try and like perfect and stuff. So like we would just be running around trying to like finish an edit that they wanted me to get. And then um, depending on like the, again, like the edit we had to make, like we would sometimes go in the locker room, try to get a sound bite from the players, um, be ready for like when the players would run out from the tunnel and stuff. And then Every once in a while I got lucky and they would let me like go and film on the court and that was like my favorite part like hello I'm right in the action um really grateful like they believed in me to like be able to do that um so yeah and then you you like get to film during the game sometimes I'd be off in the sideline like just kind of like observing watching the editors seeing what they're doing um and then yeah and then uh game would end sometimes you go in the locker room get another sound bite and then the game ends and you're there like until maybe 11:30 at night and then sometimes dumping footage after kind of getting ready for if you have to build an edit for the next day and then it comes back to the next day we come do the finish the edit and we only had like a day or two to like turn something around and event like sometimes i would get an edit to do and then other times it was just hey i got the experience of studying and seeing what the other editors were doing and just like building my knowledge and stuff Sorry, that was like a load. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's great. And I, that's super interesting because the, the, originally the first video I think that drew me into to your content was like something from the Kings on TikTok. You were like talking about like your, your experience and just like I really enjoyed the edit that you put together. So I definitely want to dive into your just like TikTok presence because I checked this morning and at the, at the time that we're filming this, you have 26,000 followers. And I'm sure by the time people see this in a month, six months from now, you'll be like, way above that but yeah just fill me it's crazy yeah fill me in on just sort of and by the way first of all before we even get into it like if please follow her i'll leave the link on tiktok in the description um it just it's like everything that you're putting on there is just like a hack like it's so informative like you're really giving in-depth knowledge so i want to just pick your brain on 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 your strategy be, behind tiktok and I guess, like, what was that first video that kind of, like, blew up and then just sort of what that has led to um, just uh, through your strategy on TikTok? At first, I was using TikTok as just, like, for fun, just like everyone is. Like, when you first start out, you're just wanting to find funny videos. So that's what I was just watching videos. Um, event like, a couple times I'd be posting, like, an edit I made. It would get a couple views and whatever. Um, and finally, I made an edit for my sister and I went to, it was um, summer of 2019. My sister and I went to the Stranger Things 3 premiere. So I had like a bunch of footage of like the characters coming in and like other celebrities that were there. So I made like a quick little recap of my day and that one blew up and got like, I think like 600K views. And that's where I started to get like a following. And I was like, 
oh my God, like, okay, now I have people like on my page, like maybe I can start posting more of my edits and people will see like I'm a videographer, video editor, and I don't know, we can just see where it goes. And that's when I started to really um, start posting. I didn't post every single day at that point, um, just posting my edits. And then I like, I think my next kind of like bigger one, um, I posted like an Astroworld edit I made and that one started to gain like more traction too. And people were like, oh, you do video editing. Can you like give me tips on how to do this and this? Um, and then that's when I started to like share more of my experience. And that one I posted the King's internship. And, and then from there I was like, okay, like I have like kind of like a, not like a decent following, I guess. Like I could really like make something out of this. Like I had the opportunity. I wasn't going to let it like slip by me. So then I really got into like trying to post every single day and just like sharing my knowledge just cause I wish I had that when I was starting out. Like if you're just starting out now, like social media, you have all of the tools like at your fingertips. Like it's so crazy. Um, and I just wish I had something like that when I was starting. So I just want to like be able to give back and just like, it's really cool to just inspire people. And, um, especially for other female creatives out there. Cause I will get comments saying like, Oh, it's so cool to see a female videographer doing this. Cause it's true. Like I don't see, I don't have a lot of like women that I can like look up to in this space. So I just think it's really cool if like creator, more female creators are starting to share and like share their stories, share their input. And I just love like being able to share my knowledge and stuff and receive stuff back in return. Like just spreading our knowledge basically is what I'd like strive to do and want to do. So that's a really great point. I definitely want to like, just, it, just with the female creatives and just in the industry, I think it's like, at least for me, I, I've, on most of the sets that I'm on, it's always like very male heavy, male dominated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, I love seeing females like you and, and I'll, I try to feature as many females as I can because I want to show that there are women who are, you know, doing the same things yeah. that I do and can do it 10 times better. Like it, it doesn't matter. Um, so <laughs> ha, ha, have there been any like specific challenges with that as far as being a female content creator, anything that you've noticed? Or is it just like you're, you want to yeah. be on the forefront of of putting putting females on and, and showing showcasing what you're capable of. At the time with the Kings, I was the only um, female in my like production department. So it was like six guys and then me being the only girl. And then same with like after that, I was an audio visual technician, same thing, only guys um, working like 12 hour days and be, not having a, one other female was like so challenging. So there's just like, it's been moments that have like led up to finally, I'm just like, and even I'll be on YouTube when I do watch, like watch tutorials and like I'm looking to just like build my skills and stuff. It's basically all men. Like I don't, I have like, I can name like two female like YouTubers I can watch and stuff. So it's like, I just think it's so important to have like other females just spreading our knowledge and just like trying to build our way up in this industry because like we're so dope and there's so many of us that are like maybe being more shy and more reserved and don't want to put yourself out there because like most of the time I'll have like my comments if like say they're bas like kind of more mean like it's honestly like coming from guys and I'm like oh my god like like girls just need to like I don't even know how to describe it we just need to like I don't know I <laughs> like I'd like drawing a blank it's just like it's just so frustrating like watching like sometimes like girls just commenting and saying I'm scared to like do this it's like why like just I, I don't know I just want us to all like grow from each other and just like get bit get bigger get I don't know more opportunities so yeah absolutely do you feel like uh, the majority of the comments you get on like social media are like people reaching out to you and like trying to get overcome that fear of of putting themselves out there and creating would you say that's the most common theme yeah honestly I do get that a lot and like it's weird because I've been like in high school, I was so shy, so reserved. Like, like I said, like I didn't want to go network. I didn't want to do this. And finally, like I would say in college, I kind of like came out of my shell and just like realized like, hey, if I want to be in this industry and I want to make connections for myself, like I need to put myself out there. And um, yeah, like I'll get comments being like, well, how do I um, get over my camera shyness? And it's like, once you like don't care about what others think of you and like, letting their opinion stop you from doing what you're doing like you're unstoppable like you can achieve like anything you want to do and another big thing is I got into this is like really bad but I got into Gary V very late I discovered him back um late of 2020 I know it's so bad I don't know where I was I was like under a rock or something so I like binged watched his content for like months and I was like oh my god he's just preaching like do what you want to do don't care what other people think like that's stopping you from getting these opportunities you've always wanted 
So once I like was watching him for a while, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, that's when I really started to pick up on TikTok, posting every single day, not caring about what the comments were gonna say. I don't get like mean comments really, but like every once in a while, one will come up and it like stings a little, but you just have to like get over it and just like, you're, hey, those people leaving the comments are definitely more insecure and are just like wanting to do what you're doing. So it's like, you just have to put it into perspective just go put yourself out there and you never know who will come across your page, get you a job, where it will lead you to, so. Yes, amazing advice. Thank you so much, Alyssa, just for inspiring the youth and, and women and women and men alike and just people can learn a lot from you. Um, so thank you so much for, for, for sharing all that. And I, I wanna wrap up this first half of our conversation, first half of the interview, um, just with what your goals are. You know, What are you looking to accomplish in five, 10, 20, 30 years from now, tomorrow, even just in the short term, you know, what are some things that are, that are on the forefront for you? First goal is definitely move to LA, start connecting. Like I have like some connections down there, like people I've been working for, it'd be really dope to like, finally, I've been working with them during this pandemic, all virtual. So it's like, it'd be really cool to finally collab in person and stuff. Um, my like biggest thing is I would love to just go on tour and like be a videographer for concerts and stuff. That's like my favorite thing is going to concerts. I would kill to be like a videographer for someone, go on tour. I don't, I just love like the music industry and stuff like that. So that's definitely a goal I want to accomplish somehow. I don't know. It could take years. I don't care. As long as it like finally happens, um, that'd be really dope. Um, eventually like if it's talking like five to 10 years, 20 years, like I think it'd be so cool again to like talk about like female empowerment. Like I would love to somehow maybe have like a production company where it's like all female driven. We're giving females opportunities for jobs, just trying to get them gigs and just like helping each other out where it's like a safe space for female creators. That'd be really something I've like put my mind in, like something I've embedded in my mind and like would love to maybe do one day. I don't know how I would do it. It'd be definitely years down the line, but just some, something for female like creators to just like feel safe, have a safe place to get gigs and stuff like that. Yeah, and I have zero doubt that you're gonna accomplish everything. <laughs> at, at the rate that you're going, yeah. the sky's the limit for you. And it's actually Thank been one of, it's, it's yeah. one of my goals to be a tour videographer too. So I'm sure we'll run each, into oh, each other on tour at some time. Yes. Uh, but amazing, yes. thank you. I thank love that. Yes, thank you again for sharing all your knowledge. Um, you know, I'm sure people can take a lot from this. So we're gonna move on. To our next portion, you brought five amazing pieces of content that we're about to go over. Um, so let's let's cut to that now. Hey guys, I'm here with my boy Ryder. Uh, we actually just got done playing 2K. We played a little bit of a little bit of Fortnite and uh, just hung out at the practice today, man. How do you how do you feel today? It's awesome. Thank you so much, <laughs> man. No problem, man. It's, it's been a great day. It's definitely been fun, and I uh, hope you guys tune in. I actually interned at the Make-A-Wish Foundation here in Los Angeles when I was in college. Oh, um, and it was great. I love the whole organization, and I love these videos. I remember watching them like every summer. Yeah. On ESPN, they would have like the Make a Wish series uh, over the summers. So um, I love that. So walk us through just like this oh, that's video. Amazing. This yeah. Walk us through this video this day and just how how it came about. This was last January, right before the pandemic hit. Um, Darren basically, um, this is when I was doing all freelance work. Um, my good friend Carlos, he's actually my mentor. He's like one of my favorite people ever. Um, he was an editor with me at the Sacramento Kings and um, we just developed like a really quick friendship and just like we've been working together for like years now, both as freelancers too. Um, so he's De'Aaron's main videographer and at this time Carlos had gone back home. He lives in Chicago and last minute Carlos was like, he called me and was like, Alyssa, I'm in Chicago and De'Aaron has a kid coming from Make-A-Wish to like follow him um for a couple of days and just like get to hang out with him can you go and shoot this for me and this was i think like the night before and i was like oh my god yeah sure like if you need me like i can totally um do it so last minute the next day um it was like a two-day thing 
and the first day I went to Golden One Center and Ryder was the kid who got to meet Darren. Super, super amazing. I got to meet his amazing family, so kind. And um, he got to watch Darren practice and like take a tour of Golden One Center and get to like hang out, eat, play video games with him. So I was just following along with them throughout their day, just trying to make like a recap for both Instagram and Darren's YouTube channel because he's been posting a lot on there. Um, so yeah, and Carlos is so cool. He literally was like, do your thing, no direction, have fun with it, make a recap. I know you can kill it. Just like have fun. And I was like, okay, say less. Like, I, I, I'll just, I guess, wing it. Cause I, it was the night before. Like I didn't have much time to really plan much. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go and just see it, what happens. Um, so yeah. And then the next day, um, Ryder got to go back and watch an actual Kings game. So I got to be there with him. They got to, um, watch warmups and go in the locker room before the game. So I was just following along. Um, and I had already like worked at the Kings at that point. So I was like familiar with everything. So that did make it easier to like get this shoot done and like get the certain spots I knew in Golden One Center and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this video just like means so much to me. It was like, it was honestly like fate to be able to meet this family. Um, I still talk to them here and there, like we'll email back and forth, just check in with each other. They're super special and like De'Aaron was so awesome with um, just hanging out with them, making them feel special, making them feel comfortable. So this just had to be like one of my favorite videos like I've ever done, just like for how special it was. I got to capture writer's experience, so. And that's beautiful. I love how you still keep in touch with the family. Like, I think that's one of the, that's one of like the best parts of, of being a, a creator, just like all the people you get to come across and, and create relationships with, because it's just such an intimate experience to film them and their experiences. So that's just like, it's a beautiful thing. Um, I wanted to get your, get your uh, knowledge on just like what it's like, um, you know, collaborating with players, you know, such as De'Aaron and, you know, at your time with the Kings, you know, how I'm sure obviously they're professional athletes and they have their own thing, but, you know, just being able to interact with them and work with them, you know, occasionally what, you know, what is that experience like and what are some key takeaways that you've had from, from it all? Yeah. I mean, definitely interacting with like NBA players. It's like very nerve wracking and stuff. Like you don't want to like, I wanted to get like certain shots with De'Aaron and Ryder. So I had to kind of be like, Hey De'Aaron, I need you to do this for my shot. Um, like there was one clip in there. I can't see it like right now. Like I had him take the camera and vlog with Ryder. So just kind of like giving the direction can be a little nerve wracking. Cause you're like, okay, are they going to say no? Or are they gonna be like, no, I don't want to do that. But De'Aaron is literally the total, total opposite and is, was so willing to do whatever. Um, and same with like other players too. Like I never had a bad experience with, an NBA player before like when I was working with the Kings like they're all they've all been super nice some will say hi some will like like ask you how you're doing and stuff and then others they don't give you the time of day they just walk by whatever it's not them being mean like they're professional athletes um no but I've never had a bad experience with an NBA player or anything um and especially with Darren he was just like so kind to Ryder and just willing to do whatever we needed for him to do for the video. That's amazing. Well, yeah, you captured this beautifully, and, and uh, we'll play this. I, we'll play this as you're as you're talking through it all. But yeah, I mean, just the way it's shot and the way you captured, it, I feel like I, I really feel like I was there and, and living alongside alongside him as he was getting his wish granted. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing this one. Alrighty, moving on to our second piece of content here, we have Kenzie Elizabeth, YouTuber extraordinaire. For Kenzie, she was someone I had always watched for like years. Um, I just love watching like the, besides watching tutorials and stuff on YouTube, I like watching like lifestyle creators and stuff. She was living in LA at the time, so I loved watching influencers down there. Um, and basically one day I was watching her video and she said, hey, I'm looking for an editor, um, would love someone to work, start working with me and start creating more content. She wanted to build her channel. Um, so I just, that was the first time I DM'd like an actual like influencer like this on this level. And I was like, hey, let's just try it. If it doesn't work out, it's okay. I can try and find someone else. Um, but I DM'd her and then maybe I think that was like, I DM'd her one morning and then she got back to me later that night. So all day I was stressing. I was like, oh my God, she's not gonna open it. She's not gonna see it. Like, what are the odds of her seeing my work? Um, and later that night she opened my DM and she messaged me saying like, oh my God, I love 
um, like I posted a 2018 like recap video and she was like, I love this one video. Like this is exactly the style I want. Like let's start working ASAP. And at that point I was like, oh my God, I'm starting to work with like one of my favorite influencers at the time. Like how did I just do this? So that's another thing, like just not being afraid to start DMing whoever you want to work with because I started working with Kenzie who I'd always looked up to. So that's why I like really wanted to showcase this video and just talk about like, just don't be afraid to shoot your shot because you never know who you'll work with and stuff. Um, but yeah, she was amazing. We see like this is the opposite. Like with De'Aaron's video, I had full creative control. And then with Kenzie, like I did appreciate her structure and she sent me like an outline for everything for this video. Like, I love this shot of me. Can we um, use this certain music? Um, she let me be more creative with like maybe the overlays and effects and like the um, style of the video, I guess. But she was very like particular and like, I want this shot of me. Um, and just like kind of laying it out in a certain way, I guess, which I did appreciate. And it's like sometimes gigs, like you can have full of creative control and sometimes you have to like follow with what the client wants and meet their needs and stuff. So yeah, this like opportunity and I really loved this video and getting to see like my work on her channel was like a big full circle moment. Like I was so excited. And then we got to, um, we worked together for about a year after that, just like working on her, um, some YouTube videos for her and stuff like that. I helped her out with like some of her podcast content and getting like familiar in the podcast space. Um, so yeah, I really um, enjoyed my time like working with Kenzie. It was really dope. Reaching out to people is just like the number one key when it comes to just getting jobs, right? And using your leverage on social media um, to do that. So I wanted to get your insight just on your strategy behind uh, reaching out to, to clients and how many people you're DMing and, and you know what that looks like because that that's the number one way that I get work as well just through Instagram reaching out to people creating those relationships um, so would love would love to get your take on it when I reach out to um, basically like anyone I want to work with it's kind of like I have like a template of kind of like a thing that I usually like kind of copy and paste and we'll just like send it out to as many people as I can um, but I'll like change certain things to like meet I guess their needs if that makes sense um so yeah with Kenzie and now like what I do every time just like introducing myself what I do um I say I'm from Sacramento and that could be another thing like uh depending on where you live like maybe you can get more gigs depending on your location and stuff but just offering your services saying like how dope you think they are um why you think you would um, be a good fit or anything and then sending your portfolio sending them a link to your social media is obviously important they want to see what you do and what you can bring and um, what you offer so at that point when i started to kind of like i start i got the first gig with kenzie and maybe reaching out to more people i really took my portfolio seriously started to post more on instagram building my um it's not like i I don't know if it's like a, I guess it's a business Instagram, my A Young Vision business, like Instagram, I started to post on there more, creating a brand, uh, just showing that you're the real deal. You can offer your services and just like, and sometimes, most of the time you won't hear anything back from like creatives like this. And that's definitely happened. I've reached out to a lot of people, don't hear anything. It's what it is. It wasn't meant to be. Um, so you just can't get like down on yourself when you don't maybe hear from like your favorite person or anything like that. Um, just keep building your skills and then maybe one day it can happen. If they come across your page again, you reach out another time. Um, you just never know with timing and everything and who will come across your page. So Yeah, definitely. And I, I would say that the majority of the time people probably won't respond to you or, or even see it because I'm sure they're just inundated with it's not it's never really personal. It's just like they have things going on. They already have someone that they don't really worry about. With DMs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, just becoming comfortable with rejection is kind of just part of the game. You know what I mean? Like it's yes. the, I, I think that the yeah. quicker you you learn to just brush it off and it's like, all right, cool. On to the next one. The, the easier it becomes. Yeah. And uh, one strategy that I've been I've been trying out lately with um, my reaching out on Instagram, at least, is I'll send a voice message instead because I think it's a little bit like just more intriguing sometimes like then um just like because when it's a text it's like a paragraph it's like i don't i do that too still but it's like oh yeah it's like hi i'm Saul and it's like all this stuff but then uh what i do now is like i'll send a work example that i feel like fits their brand the most and then i'll send a, a like a 50 second voice message 
that just explains the same thing that I would have written out. But I think people are a little bit more intrigued or likely to like press play to hear the voice message. But then again, it depends on who it is. Like, yeah. So anyone watching, feel free to try that out. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Um, <laughs> Seriously, I'm gonna have to try that out. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I wanted to ask you about this specifically. So something that I really enjoy about your work, and I think it's a consistent theme, is just like the overlays and the different effects that you, that you kind of have. So, um, you know, what, what's sort of the thought process behind your style, and um, how do you go about, you know, finding these different effects or any any rec recommendations? Honestly, I've never paid for an overlay an effect or anything I will just be resourceful and a lot of places have free downloads and stuff um so just trying to like be resourceful find go on YouTube search up like if you, like I when like glitching was starting to get like really big like I was finding like free glitch overlay effect and then like somehow it just keeps leading on to like finding more and more effects like on YouTube other websites and stuff so just like really just being resourceful finding free ones like I've never paid for one um I don't know. You just kind of have to find maybe it, certain things that you like. Um, I don't know. It just like I'll just find random things and kind of work with it, play around with it on Premiere. Like I don't always take an overlay and use it the way it's supposed to. Like I'll top it up, make it, um, I don't know, the opacity kind of make it different. Um, just messing around and just like having fun with it. Like you don't need to use an overlay like how it's supposed to be. So. Now Dries finds the seam, look out, above the rim, and the throw down by Vince Carter. Zebo for another three, he's got the triple. taking a timeout. Here's Carter with a deep three, six seconds to go, front rim short. It's grabbed by Temple. Put back, scored by Justin Jackson with one second to go. So this will be a bang bang sequence to win it. Inbounds, quick launch, score the basket. It's knocked down by Russell Westbrook. This video was like a little before halfway through my internship and I hadn't really gotten my gotten to do like my own full production video like by myself yet. I was kind of always just like getting um, editing jobs that like the other editors didn't want to do. They would like throw it at me. They're like, can you do this edit for the day? Yeah, whatever. Um, but I always loved watching um, the other editors create mini movies. That was like kind of a big thing at games, like one of the most common videos they were making just to like recap the night and stuff. And I had always wanted to make one. And one day I'm just sitting at my desk logging um, before a game. And one of the editors, Kevin, he comes up to me. He's like, it was just um, him working the game, just me and him. There was um, like four editors in total. Um, so it was just us two for the game. And he was like, hey, Alyssa, I, like, I'm so swamped. Like, can you please um, edit the mini movie for tomorrow? And I was like, oh my God, yeah, like totally. Um, I would love to, like, I love these videos so much. Like, of course. And he's like, okay. And then another thing is I need you to actually film it too. And I was like, holy crap, I'm about to get this opportunity that I've been wanting. Um, I was like, yep, sign me up. I'm going. He's like, okay. He's like, but you need to go now. Like, just like start filming right now. I was like, Okay, so I didn't have any story in mind, any plan. Um, I just kind of went off of like my knowledge of like what they had been doing in the past and just going with it. So I was running around like a crazy person just trying to like get B-roll, aesthetic shots, opening shots of just like anything to somehow create a story. Um, so yeah, it was a crazy day. Just like I had to make sure I was on time to warm up, so pregame, had to find like someone to do an interview with. Like I... I it's in there. I did like a um, little soundbite from Doug Christie. So like it was so nerve wracking trying to like get all this content. But like I had been studying and watching these type of videos for so long that like I was just having fun with it, even though it was like super stressful. Um, so yeah, I edited or I filmed all day, filmed the whole game, got everything. And then they wanted it turned around for the next day. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do that either. Um, so I actually like Everyone gets into the office where they did like around like 9 a.m. But I was there at like 6.30 <laughs> like a.m. Just I was like, I need to start working like they're going to want this by the end of the day. So 
I got there around like 6.30 to 7, um, right when it started to get light outside. And I, I think I left my desk once that day. I used the bathroom once. I was like, I need to finish this edit for tonight. Um, and like I finished the edit. And at the time, we kind of had like a manager who was, he didn't really like love our creative styles that much. And like everyone knew that and stuff. So I had him, he had to overview or look over the video before it would get posted. And in the mini movie, we actually lost the game by one point. Like um, Russell Westbrook hit a game winner and we lost. So I put that in the movie and he was like, he watched the whole thing and he's like, that was great, but like we lost. And he's like, I don't know if we're even going to play this. And I was like, what like I just spent all day like editing this video for you guys you know like you knew we lost like you could have told me but right at the game ended like okay Alyssa scrap this edit but I had just like poured my heart and soul into this project he's like I don't know if it's gonna play um good job good effort and I was like crushed like oh my god I just poured my heart and soul into this edit this was like the dopest thing I got to do um and then I went home I was kind of bummed like great now they're not even gonna play it but then um, like an hour after I got home, they had posted it and they actually ended up sharing it like all over social media. So like, I was like, thank God, <laughs> it finally posted. Like people got to see my work and it was so rewarding. Just like, I really thought like I did it all for nothing. And now um, looking back, it's like one of my favorite projects I've ever done. Like now I would have edited it way differently. That was definitely my editing style back then. Um, I would have probably done it so differently, but I'm really proud of like, where I was then to be able to create something like that. So that's a little backstory behind it. Of course, it. and I love that. And I think, uh, A, amazing job. Even if this was like, you feel like you could have done a better job on this, like it's it's really good. So don't even don't even try to downplay it because you killed this. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that whole anecdote about like it not even being posted is just like one of the trials and tribulations one of the many trials and tribulations that creatives have to go through when it comes to projects because it's like yeah like you said like you spent literally all day working on this and you know people can spend all day shooting things and, and creating things and for whatever reason like it just doesn't work out it doesn't get posted it doesn't matter how good it was for one reason or another like it just doesn't end up coming out sometimes um, and that's just kind of part of the game as well. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things that you don't ever really foresee yeah. when you're starting out. Um, but things like that do happen, unfortunately. Um, but I'm so glad they posted it because this was, right. this was killer. I, I did want to. Thanks. Yeah. I'm so glad. To... <laughs> I, I wanted to t get your like in insight on like, just how you decided to split your time while shooting this. Like, you know, I, I, how did you position yourself? Like, we were like, okay, I'm, I'm here for a good amount of time. Let me switch over. Like, how did you go just about that whole process of, of getting these shots and and really um, just being resor resourceful with, with the amount of shots that you edited just so that you would have like a massive catalog for the next day that was uh, necessary, you know? Totally. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a big thing they always told me, like, especially like if I was filming and then another editor had to take over a project or something, they always told me to film um, my clips like basically doing one longer clip instead of a million short clips. <laughs> yeah, I guess I explained that right. Um, so like I didn't have as many clips, but maybe my clips were a little longer. So like if I was sitting on the court, like filming um, a play, I would immediately after play was over, I was like zooming in to try and get like a beauty aesthetic shot of maybe a player's reaction or like them sweating or just like, I don't know, something. So like I was just trying to like utilize my time filming one shot of like, or moving over and getting a fan reaction or something. So I was having like less clips, but maybe them being longer and I could like scrub through and be like, oh, I remember this moment in my head. Like, let me get that reaction from the player here. Um, and then also like I had to go back and like find all the game footage throughout the day and just trying to like maybe take more of the better plays from the game. Um, so yeah, some of the beauty shots, like I had to utilize like my time and just not getting as many shots I had to go through, but just making them, I guess, longer takes, if that makes sense. Gotcha, yeah, that's interesting. I would have never have thought that. I, I would definitely just be like the one to shoot like a 30 second clip and it's like, all right, next one. So that's good right. to know. But that's how I was doing it at first until they were like, Alyssa, you're filming way too many clips, like just do one longer clip and just try to find moments while, so you don't miss the shot you're already recording, just try and like get something good basically yeah no that's interesting it's so fascinating how nba creative teams work and i'm sure every team has a different workflow too you know what i mean so that's oh, uh, so different, yeah right? Crazy. that's amazing this is another thing where um carlos he um 
works with the owner of this brand. His name's Zane. And the people of Sacramento is so well known in, um, in SAC. It's just like the number one brand. Like that's what people represent. Like they have a certain logo that everyone knows of. And um, I had always, I've been following them for a long time. Like I loved their fashion, like how um, they have a really cool store down, um, I guess it's like in Midtown. And um, one day Carlos asked me, he's like, hey, do you want to come out? And we're filming kind of like a lookbook little edit thing um, for fashion. And he's like, I want you to have like more of like a fashion type of thing for your portfolio. And it's so cool. He's always like trying to look out for me. And like, he's like, let's add new types of videos to your portfolio. So I was like so down. I kind of like started to get into more like fashion now and like hype sneakers, just like, I don't know, stuff like that. So I was so excited to like get on this opportunity. Um, so yeah, we did a shoot. It only lasted, I think like maybe two hours. Um, they were coming out with like a new launch for their merch. And um, we just were walking around SAC, just like filming um, them goofing off, like four of them, the four guys in the videos, they were professional dancers. So we were filming them like doing their thing. Um, just like I brought my camcorder. So we were doing more of like a VHS old school look too. Um, but yeah, this one was super fun. I really wanted to do fashion again. And, um, and that another thing too, is like that day I was the only girl and I was nervous going into it again. I knew Carlos was there, so I would feel comfortable around him, but like with all the other guys, like it was all guys. And, um, I just like, even though I was the second shooter that day, like Carlos was still like, you give direction, you do what you need to do. And so like, he always gives me the confidence to just like get the shot that I need. So it was really cool to give direction to these guys. And just like, I had the vision in my head of what I wanted to do. And, um, yeah, it was really awesome. Just like making this type of like fashion streetwear type of content that I had never done before. So yeah, and I love it. I'm watching it on my end right now. And it just it's a very engaging piece, which which I think is very important, especially for something on social media, you know, it keeps your attention throughout it, which, which is hard to do, you know, because not, not many people can do that. Um, I want to I want to talk a little bit about Carlos, because I know you mentioned him a little bit earlier, sort of a mentor to you, um, and obviously providing opportunities. So yeah, walk us through just that relationship with him and just kind of the importance of, of how he's been in a, you know, part of your career. He's literally the best person ever. Um, yeah, we met um, during my internship. He was a video editor and I was an intern. So he really took the extra time to teach. There was another intern with me. Um, his name's Mark and he actually works for the Kings full time now. He's super dope. And Carlos just like took a different interest with us and just wanting us to always get better and push us and like he's literally the best mentor ever like when we were at the kings at first like he was like hey let's go shoot this like um let's go shoot the players warming up like we don't need the footage for anything but like let's go practice and i was like okay so we would like go down on the court and like i was starting to get into photography more like i had never i had always done video for so long so i really wanted to learn like more photo skills and so like carlos would be like we'd be sitting there he he'd take the camera he'd mess up all the settings and he's like here you go Go, tr go figure it out. And I was like, oh my God, okay. So I was like trying to mess with the settings and then I take my shot and I'd have him look at him. He's like, yep, yep, that looks amazing. Okay, now try this different type of shot or let's use this different setting. So he was so hands-on with like teaching and he still is to this day. And um, he's just always pushing us to get better. And then after the internship, um, we started to do more freelance together. He no longer works with the Kings, but like we would start to go on shoots together. And I was like, I'm just so grateful for any time we were able to go and film because he's still teaching me every single day, like every single time. And um, he always tells me, he's like, you don't need film school. Like I, you have me because he went to film school. So he was like, you literally have me. You don't need school. Like, even though I was already almost done <laughs> with school at the time, he's like, you don't even need it. Um, I'll teach you everything you need to know. So I don't even know how I got so lucky. I'm so grateful for him, like somehow coming into my life because he just teaches me all about not even like video, just like life lessons. We talk about manifestation a lot, just like, and he's also the one who always tells me like with TikTok and just sharing my knowledge and stuff, he's like, never hold back your knowledge. You like, cause you'll want to receive it back. like. He's like, it's so lame when other people aren't sharing their knowledge too. And just always be kind, always offer your services, whatever you can do to help someone. You just like always have to do that. So he really installed that into me. And so now like it, I always think about that when I'm like making my content on TikTok or social media and just like wanting to help others because that's what he like really pushed on me. So 
yeah, he's super dope. And that sounds like a great person just having your corner, just people like that. And that's oh my gosh. amazing advice. Just being, you know, doing everything with intention, with purpose for the right reasons, I think will, will take you just further than, than people who aren't. So exactly. Pro tip, pro tip. Baby, préstalo, yeah. Tú y yo sabemos que eres loca por mí pa' que escondelo. Solo tenemos una noche tú y yo para entendernos. Tú y yo sabemos entre los dos. With Sergio, so this is kind of crazy story. It goes back. Um, Sergio was a part of a boy band that my friends and I were really into. Um, so we had been like going to their concerts for a couple of years. I'm um, just like meeting up and like, um, just kind of like, I don't know, I was a fan. We would see him and like he wants, cause we would like go all the time. So he would like know of us and my friends and stuff. And just like, I would always be making edits of like, um, if I was going to a concert and I was filming something, I'd make a quick edit and like turn it around and they would see it and stuff. So like over the course of like these past, I guess it was um, like 2018, 2019, like he would see my content and stuff. Um, and then when did they broke up, the band he was in broke up like January of 2020. So last year and me and my friends, you know, we're like so sad, all, like, oh my God, life's over. <laughs> but um, we were just really sad that they were breaking up. We're like, great, now we're never gonna like see them. Like they're gonna probably um, be taking a break and stuff and never post anymore. But Sergio was like one of the guys in the band who was like, no, I'm starting my solo career. Like we're going, we're hitting the ground running. And um, one day he was just on Instagram live and he was like, honestly, I'm trying to build my team. Like if one of you guys like know how to edit, know how to um, do graphic design or anything, like just hit me up. Like, I don't know, we can just see where it takes us. And so after that Instagram live, I sent my DM, <laughs> said, hey, um, I mean, he knew of me already, but like we weren't, he wasn't like following me or anything. So I was just like, hey, I do video editing for real. I'm not just like making edits from a concert. Um, love to work with you, help build your, start your solo journey and everything. And he actually saw it. And from then he was like, yep, let's do it. Be a part of my team. Your work is dope. Um, Let's just see where it goes. And at that point I was like freaking out, like, oh my God, he like likes my stuff. Like this can be like something that could go on for a bit. And um, so we really hit the ground running and that was back in um, March of 2020. So I guess now it's been a year of us working together. And um, since then he's released three singles. Um, I made a music video for all three of them, which is like super cool. Like I'm so appreciative that they like kept me on the team to create these music videos. Um, would love one day to like be able to do it in person once maybe things get better with COVID and everything. Um, but yeah, so this one, this music video, I sent you like all the stuff. Like we, every time we always create like Instagram content, teasers, um, YouTube thumbnail, the music video itself. And, um, yeah, this one, it's like with these videos they send me, like, it's like kind of not in a way it's like hard to work with, but like I only have like 10 to 12 takes of them, him singing the song. And then they're like, here, make a music video out of it. So I kind of have to like dive in and like find, go on Pinterest, go on YouTube, watch other music videos, try to find ideas, find like quick little cuts I can make to try and make it more interactive since I'm working with such a limited amount of clips. Like I can't go and be like, hey Sergio, let's go film today. Cause like it was unrealistic. So um, yeah, just trying to be, be as creative as I can virtually and just working with the short amount of clips that I had. Um, it's really rewarding to finally see it like in the end come together and like he really loves it and his manager and his team really loves it. So it's so rewarding to like finally be in all, like a full circle moment of getting to work with him and then like producing content for him that we all enjoy, so. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when it comes to you being brought on as an editor for this project, like how much direction, you know, was sort of given or was it really just like, hey, let's like, here it is, like you do your thing and, and we'll, we'll, we'll be happy with what you produce. Exactly, it's like that. Um, I mean, I made like a, I would always make like a Google doc laying out my ideas for maybe like certain shots. Like this is after they filmed it. Like they would always film it. They wouldn't tell me anything about the production process. They would just hand me the footage after. And then that's where I had to like kind of come, come up with the creative ideas. 
Um, so yeah, I would always make a Google Doc laying out um, certain cuts I would make, certain like overlays I would use, transitions, stuff like that. And um, I'd always send it to Sergio before I would start and his manager and just be like, hey guys, this is kind of like how I'm gonna edit it, is this okay? And they're always like, yep, go with it. I'm sure it'll be great. Like, we'll just see how it turns out. So yeah, like they don't give me much like direction. I get a lot of creative control and stuff. And um, at the end, like there's usually like not many changes like they have me make. Like occasionally, like it'll be like Sergio doesn't like a clip of himself. He's like, oh no, take that clip out of me. Like stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's really cool getting to work with him and his team. They're very um, appreciative of me and we all like, we're able to collaborate really well and just like work together because we all kind of have like the same vision and mindset for like how we want these videos to turn out. Amazing, cool, we did it. Th those were the five pieces of content from A Young Vision. Crazy. Killed it, thank you so, hey. so much just for sharing your time and knowledge and wisdom for everyone to soak up and all the amazing amazing projects that you've been on. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see all the growth that you have and we'll, we'll definitely link once you're down here in LA, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll do some projects together. Um, yep. So that'll be fun. Before we let you leave, last thing, if you can just look at the camera that you have set up at your home and let people know how they can find you, how can they reach out to you if they want to give you some work, let, let them know. Yeah, um, you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, at A Young Vision. I'm trying to post every single day, just like sharing our knowledge, just want to work together, DM me. A Young Vision is basically it, <laughs> so yeah. Amazing, yes, please hire her, everyone. Um, but thank you, <laughs> thank you again, I appreciate it, and we'll catch you all in yeah, the next one. thank you.